crude prices have crashed to one year low and we'll talk about the impact of that on indian stock prices it can get confusing because some stocks are positively impacted while some of them lose margins hi everyone welcome to the update of 4th september now on a day when crude has cracked 6-7% globally one of the biggest beneficiaries is asian paints many consumption stocks were up today hul was a beneficiary grasim was up as well it cracked severely wipro was down most 3% Yesterday I said four of the top five sectors were down. Today all five were in the red. The rescue today was attempted by aerospace and defense and chemicals. That's the impact of the order yesterday as well as the crash in crude prices. Look at the volumes in defense pack. Besides BL and solar industries, everything was up more than hundred percent. Asian Paints was up two and a half percent. We delight one and a half percent. By tomorrow probably Asian Paints might be in the green zone. Nifty's 14-day winning streak came to an end today. Not a major cut, 0.3% only. This is where Nifty closed yesterday, 25,275 levels. It opened close to 25,100 levels, 175 points down. The trading range for the day was 121 points, about half percent. For most of the day, actually, Nifty was trading in a very narrow range. Now one strange phenomena which I have noticed is on bank nifty expiry nifty stocks are impacted. Bank nifty does nothing and on nifty expiry days banks move around. This perhaps takes care of the positions of most traders who trade in bank nifty and nifty using FNO. Let's check bank nifty. So bank nifty had closed just a shy short of 51,700 yesterday. The trading range was 187 points just 0.4%. Look at where Bank Nifty was trading for most of the day on the weekly expiry. Literally no volatility, there was no major spike. So everyone who had purchased options for today, they would have lost a lot of money, be it call options or be it put options. This is a day for option sellers. The majority of fall came from IT side, 1% down. Today also FIs, DIs both bought, but the net quantities were very low. Three days of consecutive buying by both DIs and FIIs. Nifty energy as well as corrected half percent, but next 50 was marginally up, auto corrected. August just ended and the latest data has been published. The inventories are at 7.5 lakh units with the dealers. This is amounting to roughly 75,000 crores worth of inventory. The manufacturing cost of all these vehicles is stuck. Future is uncertain whether these vehicles can be sold in the festive season or not. Today the day was saved by Reliance that absorbed significant part of the fall. HDFC and ATEL also were up a little but ATEL picked up towards the end only. It was down most of the day. ICICI, Infosys, SBI all corrected. US markets cracked yesterday. Bad data. Each and every stock except Berkshire Hathaway which enjoys these bad days was up. Remember Berkshire Hathaway is sitting on record cash pile. In a major news today, HDB, which is the microfinance arm owned by HDFC Bank, about 93-94% is owned by HDFC, is aiming for a 9-10 to $10 billion IPO by March. This will create a nearly 80,000 crore company, which is nearly 4x the current largest microfinance company, Credit Grameen, which is around 20,000 crores. Just as a disclaimer, I have holding in pre-IPO in HDB and because of this news, I am also holding HDFC Bank because it will be a big monetization for HDFC Bank. Today's winners were HUL, Asian Paints, Reliance, Sun Pharma, Ultratech. IT and banking was not good today. TCS, Coal India, ONGC, Wipro, ICICI Bank, Infosys. The next level also SBI, Axis Bank, m and Larson and Tubro. We now have three banks actually here. SBI, Axis Bank and ICICI. Next 50, 21 down, 29 up. I'm seeing Berger probably for only the second time in the top, followed by Avenue Supermarkets, which is Dmart, ICICI Lombard, Dabur, Adani Green, Varun Beverages. What was down? Tata Power, Bank of Badoda, Canara Bank, PNB, and Zomato. Volumes are very high for the laggards. There was a very peculiar pattern today in defense stocks. I'll talk about it. Reliance trading range was around 30 points today. It opened 20 points gap down but then climbed up and stayed up closing near the highest point of the day. TCS closed yesterday at 45.10 and opened today around 44.50 nearly 1.5% down. TCS also closed near the day high. ATL was volatile today 1.3% trading range. Yesterday it had closed around 15.65. Today it opened around 15.55 but fell immediately to 15.40 levels. 
went up down consolidated then continuously went up these days it is very hard to hold back atl in general most nifty stocks opened about one or one and a half percent below their yesterday's close only hdfc bank opened close to where it closed yesterday hdfc traded in a range of 12 points today literally 1632 to 1644 that too it went to 1645 levels very early in the day and stayed in a very tight range of six points that's hdfc bank on a bank nifty expiry let's check icici bank a 10 point range between 1232 and 1243 that's hardly any range to make money for traders sbi was in a half percent range four points range now my expectation is tomorrow on nifty expiry banks will explode up or down i don't know now let me show you something very interesting in defense so most defense shares shot up very early in the day now look at the synchronization here the fall in defense shares remarkably at the same time literally all stocks fell and created a high for the day Cochin shipyard touched 2000 and then it fell literally to 1900 levels still it closed 2.5 percent up besides jsw steel all metals bled today jsw steel was up but hindustan zinc was down especially from the closing price of yesterday tata steel was down indalco was down vedanta was down forgot to show in nifty hul made a 52 week high today it sector was in deep red today Vipro led the fall 3.5% but both big boys TCS and Infosys were down. Good thing was the volumes were shallow which means not much sellers. Power pack was down a lot mostly profit booking. Oil companies selectively were up or down. I'll talk about it in the nugget section. Volume in oil companies were good. Power sector the volumes were not good which is a good sign on a bad day. Food and tobacco cracked a lot today. Godfrey Phillips has the most profit so that fell most. Godrej was down but other consumption stocks were up. HUL was up most 1.2%. Automobiles was a sea of red today. Mahindra and Mindra was down most 1.6%. Madarsan Sumi despite the fantastic QIP announcement was down. Beverages was looking okay today. The top 4 stocks were green. Chemicals perhaps was a sector of the day 1.3% up led by Asian Paints 2.4%. Asian Paints tomorrow should be in the green now. Coal India corrected a lot today 2.9%. On days where consumption in future is being challenged, construction engineering fell. On the other hand, no major gains but cement sector was up. Note this sector, we'll talk about it in the nugget section, feet and logistics. Today everything was down. Also there is nothing in the green hair. Insurance came under heavy profit booking, the sector was 1% down. Most of the investment banking companies were doing good, BSC bounced back 0.8%. ABB gave up all the gains from yesterday, the sector heavy machinery was down significantly 0.5%. Vedanta has a big dividend coming up, however it was down 1.3%. India is talking about semiconductors every day in this sector, only one company is listed, that too only 1800 crores. Not a single green in transport infrastructure, the sector was down today. Look at this interesting graph on the right side. The greens are the top 10 companies by market cap, only the consumption pack was in the green. 9 out of 10 companies were in the red when it comes to market cap. I miss selling Cochin Shipyard by a minute today, no trades otherwise. Interesting topic for the day, crude prices are low, what will be impacted, good or bad? Let me start with some data, United States produces more crude oil than any other country ever. The US has been using its entire capacity for the year 2024, nothing idling. Remember somewhere around 2022 to 2023 when crude was very expensive. US sold a lot of its inventory. There was a lot of criticism also for the US president by reducing and putting the country to risk by selling the crude oil. So he was probably plugging some of the gaps in the balance sheet. Now US is producing a lot of crude. Crude is cheap as well. They will replenish the inventory, probably make easily 25-30% kind of gains in what they sold any year or two year back. US is the largest producer, 12.9 million barrels per day. Russia next 10.1. This is at country level. Saudi Arabia 9.7. Crude oil today has reached a one year low. There was a sharp sell off yesterday on the back of bad US economic data, nearly 6-7%. But in about last 5-6 days only, about 10% crack has been observed in the crude prices. In the current year, crude oil peaked somewhere in April. Now if you remember, 16th March is the date when India announced their elections. A day before that, on 15th March, petrol and diesel prices were cut. 
After that, the model code of conduct was applicable and no change could be done for next two, three months. Country has not witnessed any change in petrol diesel prices since they were cut before the election announcement. So what happened was during this part when crude went up, oil companies absorbed the price. They bought crude at a high price and they could not pass on the cost to the consumers. Since then, crude has been coming down and that benefit has not gone to consumers. Oil companies are earning the extra margin, making up for the losses they made in this period. Now, these are YTD prices. All companies have gone up. Reliance, I'll keep out from the conversation because Reliance is not just oil. In fact, Reliance Retail is now bigger than the oil part. And that's a video coming up probably next week in which I'll discuss about the Reliance Pact. This is the 4th of June crash. April to about July, prices did not change for ONGC. They were stagnant for most companies. Oil India is special because that got included in MSCI and that was known for a long time. So volumes in Oil India were very high for last 2-3 months. Chennai Petro, over the year it has gone up 40%. Note, these are the producers or the refiners. Some of them like MRPL have some limited outlets also in Karnataka. These are the oil marketing companies, IOC, BPCL and HPCL. At the year level, you might see some gains 36% here. Similarly, BPCL is up 58%, HPCL is up 67%. HPCL has shown up a run up of late. IOC and BPCL have been kind of consolidating in a very narrow range of about 10%. Note most of the gains came in the initial Q4 of previous financial year. That's because crude was very low at that time. Now what is spooking crude right now? One is Libya's dispute is coming to an end perhaps and that will lead to some supply from Libya. In fact, they will go in overdrive to produce a lot of crude and sell it to make up for the losses. Now, if you go by yesterday's data, US economic worries are mounting. As a result, crude prices are correcting. Low consumption will be observed typically if the economy goes through a tough time. Middle East, especially Saudi Arabia is already anticipating the low demand. It has already declared that Asian supplies will be at lower prices. Also in Europe, unusually warm September has been observed, which means energy consumption will be low. That includes crude. In general, a lot of renewable energy is getting added to the world supply in any case every month, every year. All that is putting collective pressure on crude prices for now. Now, there are a lot of areas where impact could be observed because of low crude prices, especially if it is sustained for a quarter or so. One is the currency. India imports a lot of crude and this is among the biggest import items on India's list. If crude prices go down, then the import bill will go down. This will kind of be good for the Indian economy and Indian currency. The currency will go up a little or at least it will not devalue further in the times to come, at least for next few months. Now, personally, I'm not expecting the currency to strengthen, just that I was expecting it to go below 85, that it may not happen. Refineries, I'll not talk about Reliance like I mentioned, but the other ones, ONGC, Oil India, MRPL, CSPL, they will get crude, they will get cheap crude, but what happens is their GRM or gross refining margin is typically measured in percentages. Percentage may remain same, but if the amount is lower, for example, say 80 becomes 70, then even if the GRM is 10%, then $8 will become $7. That will be more than a 10% fall in the margins. This goes directly to the bottom line. I've been saying this for the last few days that if the crude goes below certain levels, then some stocks will have a problem. Those stocks are the refiners. Now, oil marketing companies, if crude goes up and prices remain high, their margins skyrocket. I mentioned this in Q1 review of some of the stocks, including MRPL also, that Q1 is bad because in the election season, the prices of crude were up, but the shock could not be passed on to the customers. As a result, as a result, the EPS were impacted. Now, Q2 will be reverse of Q1. In fact, Q3 could be better only. Airlines like Indigo, they will actually get positively impacted because they will not reduce the prices of tickets for sure. So Indigo should get better margins in this quarter and next quarter. Most of the travel companies also may benefit. This would include companies like Make My Trip, Ixigo. The travel in general could kind of go up if the prices go down or people sentimentally feel that the prices are down. Transport and logistics, the major cost for them is fuel, diesel or petrol, mostly diesel. The problem is that prices are still high. The prices have not been reduced. So that is why they have not run up at all right now. If domestic prices come down, 
then this sector could benefit. Paint companies, 33% of the cost is crude. So if just this week's price drop is sustained, then 3% to the bottom line. Asian paints, Berger, Narolac, all of them have positive impact. Tire companies also, one of the major cost is crude. So if crude is down, then manufacturing cost goes down. Not all of that benefit will come to you. A lot of that will be directly added to the bottom line of the tire companies. MRF, C8, all of those will be positively impacted. Then even petrol and diesel will become very costly. New vehicle purchase suffer sentimentally because people don't want to spend more on petrol and diesel. If suppose they have to spend say 90 rupees instead of 100 on diesel, then they will start affording the cars. They may even go for bigger cars or SUVs if diesel becomes more affordable. If there is money left in the pocket, then that will be spent and consumed. So consumption pack may go up. People tend to spend whatever is saved from the price drop. So some of these sections will be impacted only if petrol diesel prices go down. But that may have to wait for another month probably. If I missed something in this list, let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Hope this section was useful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.